is up guys? Welcome back. This is going to be the second installment of our mental skills series. I hope everybody had a really good week. I hope you guys are staying safe out there. I think we're on about week six, week seven of quarantine. Hope you guys are staying healthy, maybe getting outside, enjoying some of that fresh sunshine. Now generally when we're talking about mental toughness, we have two questions that we're trying to answer. First, we're trying to answer what mental toughness is, what it looks like. In case you guys miss it, you can go back, check out the last video where we cover all that information. And second, we want to know where it comes from. Maybe you think of your favorite athlete or you read a really interesting sports story. And from there, you try to think about how that athlete came to be that way. That's gonna be what we covered today. We're gonna to go over mental toughness development, literally from birth to where an athlete is later stages in their career. Now, if we look back to the definition that we had last week, we can see that mental toughness is defined as being either a natural or developed psychological end. We can look at that natural versus developed divide a number of different ways. We can look at it as something that's innate versus a mindset. Or we can think of it as a personality versus an outlook. More common is the age-old question of whether it's nature versus nurture. Now this age-old question of nature versus nurture is actually a false dichotomy because it turns out the usual answer to nature versus nurture is it's a combination of both. Today we're going to take the outlook of mental toughness from three different levels. First we're going to look at our genetics, then we're going to look at the environment, and then we're going to look at the skills that an athlete possesses and how all of those interact to create this thing that we call mental toughness. It's also important to note the different levels of control that the individual athlete has in each of these different components. Now, if we start to look into genetics, we can see that mental toughness acts like our other personality traits. And that means it can be up to 50% hereditary. That means up to 50% of it you get from your parents when you're born. In fact, all of the four C's of mental toughness show some degree of heritability. Some are a little bit higher than others, but overall it's generally no more than 50%. And this is the natural side of mental toughness. Now the bad news about mental toughness being inherently 50% genetic is that that 50% is unchangeable. We either have it from birth or we don't, and there's really nothing we can do about it. But the good news, at least 50% of mental toughness comes from other areas and other components that we can generally have a higher degree of influence and a higher degree of control over. These other areas include the experiences that we have and the skills that we acquire over our lifetime. And these areas are where we wanna put the majority of our focus. Because although it's important to understand genetics, at the same time, we have no control over them and our attention is much better used focusing on things that we can control over things that we can't. So first we're gonna take a look at a few different external factors. Now, although these factors aren't directly in a player's control, they can be shaped and molded by coaches, peers, and parents throughout an athlete's career. Coaches can be a huge influencer of mental toughness. They create and shape the environment that each athlete is in throughout their younger, most developmental years. Coaches can help out by creating challenging yet attainable goals. These goals force athletes to work as hard as they can in order to achieve them, as well as they instill a sense of confidence once they achieve them. So coaches can help by creating these appropriate goals for their athletes in practice. Coaches can also provide rewards for skill development and effort, as well as include simulated game-like pressure scenarios. These different pressure scenarios could have rewards for success and penalties for failure, and this helps to simulate what the added pressure of a competition scenario is and allows athletes to try to remain calm in these circumstances. So these environments can be shaped a little bit more by external factors so the environmental influences I want to put out there in case there's any coaches, any parents watching, but they're still generally out of the athlete's control. So now we'll look at some of the internal factors to mental toughness. These factors are generally going to be skill-based. And as you know, with any type of skill, the more you work at it, the better you get. One of the most important skills for mental toughness is self-reflection. Looking back on your own experiences allows you to become aware of your strengths and weaknesses. This also allows you to backwards engineer the relationship between your thoughts, your feelings, and your performance. Especially in the face of a setback, we can stop and reinterpret that setback as an opportunity for personal growth. Again, if you think about how we started this video, we started by looking at the genetic factors of mental toughness. If 50% of mental toughness is genetic, we can look at it from one side like, that sucks. If we don't have that, that's potentially 50% that we may never get. Or we can reinterpret that and look at it the other way. The other way, we look at, wow, there's at least 50% of mental toughness that I can have a direct influence over and try to gain. That kind of level of self-reflection allows us to always look at things from a positive standpoint. Now in general, increases in mental toughness have also been related to increasing the use of psychological tools and strategies. This includes things like goal setting, self-talk, imagery, 
relaxation, and attention control. And not only are they related to increases in mental toughness, but they're also related to increases in performance as well. And the best news is that these skills are all learnable and trainable. And that means that we have full control over them. The road to sporting success is neither short nor smooth. Even some of the world's best performers have suffered a number of setbacks along the way. More importantly, how they respond to these setbacks that's going to determine their future achievement and their future levels of success. Each one of these skills has a number of different components and areas of focus for us to understand. And just like any other skill, mental skills require sustained effort and some type of training routine in order for them to be both effectively and consistently implemented in your game to improve your performance. So stay tuned for the next few episodes of this series. Where we're going to start to break down each one of these skills individually and we'll start to talk about how they both relate to and can improve your performance. Have a good week out there, stay healthy, and we'll see you guys next time. So I was just doing all the editing on the video and realized I totally forgot to mention, if you want to look at any of the research that I've done, any of the articles I've used, you can check out all of those. They're listed down below, as well as any of the content I've used is down there as well. Take care, guys. Hope you guys have a really good week, and we'll catch you next time.